thank you guys so much for uh, um, showing up for the last session today. I know it's been a long day. Uh, it has been for me as well. Um, thanks again. Um, shiny updates uh, is what I have in store for you. Um, I don't have a whole lot of content prepared. Um, I thought that if we finished early today, we either all go have a beer, um, <laughs> or, can, <laughs> or can answer some, some more questions uh, about either shiny updates or feature plugins uh, or core in general. I'm sure we will find something to talk about. Um, so Shiny Updates has been, or is going to be, rather, a feature plugin to X, uh, like I say on the screen. Um, you could also say it is the freshest feature of WordPress 4.6 4. Uh, coming up in August of this year. Um, WordPress 4.5 is in its final day, days of the release cycle. Actually, the, the, the picture of um, the beer with the cat um, I shot that at Mike Schroeder's house when we were working on uh, uh, the release candidate for 4.5 uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, so 4.5 is uh, scheduled to, uh, to drop next Tuesday, uh, April the 12th. Uh, and after that, 4.6 is coming up next. Um, and shiny updates, I'm, I'm really hopeful that this will be part of the next uh, release um, and we can share it with the community. Uh, one of the things that um, you know, uh, feature plugins do or need to have is uh, a statement of purpose, something uh, kind of the, the goal right, that you try to achieve with that feature, feature plugin. And for um, Shiny Updates, uh, the biggest goal we had was to get rid of the bleak screen of sadness, um, a term uh, uh, coined by uh, uh, um, uh, Michael Arstead. Uh, he's a designer at Automatic, and he's been helping tremendously with uh, Shiny Updates. Um, and I'm going to show you um, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I mean with uh, the bleak screen of sadness. Um, the goal is to make that disappear uh, and make it a lot easier uh, to manage plugins and themes from WP Admin, uh, across WP Admin. Um, one of the things that you know, we see all the time when there's new upda updates available is that users react Kind of like this, you know. Uh, it's really not a great experience. Uh, we all know that. Um, so pl updating is one, one part. Another part is ins uh, installing new plugins and themes. So this is an example of how uh, it looks like when we install a new plugin. Uh, we hit install now, and we are greeted with the screen of sadness. Um, you have information that no one needs. No one knows what, you know, what we were talking about here. People don't understand, they're confused by it. Um, and we need to get rid of that. You know, it's, it's not something that provides a lot of value to, to users. And so improving plug, uh, updates is something that can go a long way and that WordPress core has been uh, trying to do for um, you know, the last two or three years um, more, than, more than ever. Um, WordPress 3.7 introduced the um, possibility for um, WordPress to ship automatic uh, minor updates to uh, your WordPress installation. Um, that was yeah, t about two years ago when we started doing that. So every install since um, can be updated um, automatically unless there's an edge case that prevents that. Like, you know, you have, um, you have a test, test site that runs on SVN, right? And uh, so we, we couldn't update that, for example. Um, the major goal for that was to um, combat update fatigue, um, something that um, if you're a plugin developer you know, and you ship new, new versions, um, you uh, probably experience yourself you know, when uh, users just reluctantly update your plugin and don't, ex you know, don't enjoy or get to enjoy your, uh, your bug fixes and, and new features. Um, by pushing out background updates, um, across WordPresses around the world. The core team is really able to close security holes um, within 12 to 24 hours, uh, even faster if, if need be. Um, so that has been a major milestone uh, for WordPress uh, in terms of you know, um, keeping WordPress uh, installations up to date. Updating themes and plugins and languages uh, is just another, another, um, yeah, another step in that direction. Or that you know, improving that rather is another step in that direction, and um, and so in WordPress 4.1, I just asked actually uh, John Blackburn 
uh, he was the, the release date for 4.1. And I just asked him, like, how did it actually come about? Like, how, um, who had the idea to, you know, start Shiny Updates? And, and he doesn't remember either. Um, so it just happened. There were people, you know, who came together, and they thought, you know, we should improve updates. So that happened in 4.1. Um, due to time constraints, uh, there wasn't really anything that went into uh, version 4.1. But in WordPress 4.2, um, which is Act 1, if you want, uh, we had uh, smooth updates or smoother updates from uh, the plugin screen, so you know the uh, list of installed plugins on your site, and also from the plugin install screen. So if you, excuse me, if you um, look at the install screen um, and you browse, you know, popular plugins, for example, and, and plugins that you have available on your site already. Uh, that are in need of an update, um, you can then go ahead and update them, them from, from that screen as well. Um, so we have updates. Um, at the time that uh, people worked on uh, Shiny Updates for uh, 4.2, um, we briefly had uh, smoother installations as well as bulk updates um, available, but we needed to cut that in order to make uh, the feature ship with 4.2 um, kind of limited in scope you know, in order to make it happen in the first place. Um, and so we're ready for uh, the second act, right? But before uh, I want to talk about that, I want to uh, dive real quick into the concept of feature plugins. Why do we do feature plugins, um, and what does that mean? Um, in WordPress 3.6, um, the core team was working on an updated uh, user interface for uh, post formats. And it was something that um, dragged on for a while longer than anticipated. It eventually um, uh, delayed the release by over a month. Uh, it was a pretty painful experience for everyone involved, um, especially Mark Jacobith, who was the re release lead of uh, 3.6. He actually um, talked about his experience uh, here at WorkCamp London uh, two or three years ago, um, sharing his lessons learned. Uh, and one of the lessons learned was that we kind of needed to find a, a uh, a solution to how we can, you know, work on features without having them delay uh, releases. And so feature plugins was a first attempt in doing that. Um, it had the advantage of um, being asynchronous to, you know, release development. It could be developed anytime. Um, also, it allowed us, it allowed us to uh, iterate faster on those, on those plugins because we uh, removed the committer bottleneck, right? We have a limited amount of people who are allowed to commit core to WordPress, uh, to, to uh, commit code to WordPress core. Um, and with feature plugins, we're, we kind of, you know, get rid of that. We can allow pretty much anyone to commit core, uh, to, commit, to commit code to that plugin. Um, and we don't release, uh, don't delay releases with that. So there was um, a lot of wins on, on that front. We had uh, a bunch of good examples of features that went into WordPress that were developed as a feature plugin first. Uh, for example, um, menus in the customizer that were introduced in 4.3 um, and, and many, many others. I think uh, OEmbed uh, was also something that was developed as a plugin first. Um, yeah. Most recently, um, a selective refresh for the customizer was something that was also developed as a plugin first. So pretty much in every release, we had something that was developed as a plugin um, where we drew uh, things that uh, other people contributed to core outside of, you know, core committers necessarily. Um, this is a process that um, we continue to iterate on. Um, so Helen Husandi, uh, one of the lead developers of WordPress, she recently uh, published a, a post on <coughs> make WordPress core, suggesting um, a new term for feature plugins, which is feature projects, to, uh, to kind of show that it doesn't necessarily have to start with a plugin, right? You can uh, do some experimentation, do some research, um, and you might end up at a point where you know, it doesn't you know, need to be a plugin to develop that feature. It could be just a small core patch or um, something, something else you know, that, um, that yeah, doesn't necessarily yeah, need a, a plugin uh, to work. And so, we, yeah, we continue to iterate on that and, uh, and experiment with feature plugins. Shiny Updates is, um, is one that um, kind of originated out of my desire to finally finish uh, the feature of you know smoother 
uh, management for plugins and themes, uh, and also a desire of the um, yeah, core team really to, to find another plugin that could be used as a example for how future plugins should be developed, right? Um, someone is waving in the back. Not me? Okay. Cool. Um, so uh, by the end of November uh, last year, right before uh, WorkCamp US, we had a, a committee meetup in New York. And um, we talked about pretty much everything around WordPress, um, the project, WordPress core, um, and also, of course, uh, the, the concept of feature plugins. Um, and as I said, um, people asked, you know, uh, could, could we have one plugin that could you know, serve as an example uh, for other you know, developers and other feature plugin authors. Um, and so I suggested China Updates as, as that feature. And um, the people who have contributed to the plugin so far and I, we, we, you know, we put a lot of effort into um, building it by the book, if you want, making sure that we have um, regular meetings, we have user tests, we have documentation, um, we have, um, you know, give people access to, to the plugin, commit access to the plugin, um, as soon as they, you know, start showing some kind of interest, right? Um, have it sync over to WordPress, um, to the WordPress.org uh, plugin repository for people to install on their sites and, and test. Um, so we made sure that, that all of these requirements um, were met and, um, and it helped a lot in terms of uh, keeping the quality high um, and getting people interested in helping out with the plugin. Um, one of the problems though was um, the lack of participation from the general community. It was pretty much me and um, two or three others who um, worked on or have been working on Shiny Updates so far. Um, they were all automaticians too, so most of them are actually, um, yeah, w did that during their daytime jobs more or less. Um, and so one of the things that I'm really looking forward um, to is having more people involved um, from outside of Automatic. I think I lost my mic, okay, I don't. Uh, from outside of Automatic, um, just to get more community involvement and uh, uh, represent more, uh, a bigger part of the community uh, with that feature. So I want to um, talk about it real quick and in terms of uh, theoretically before we um, start doing a demo, um, which I'm really looking forward to because of what could go wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, so these are the things that uh, we wanted to improve with plugins and themes. Uh, these are the actions, installing a plugin, installing a theme, bulk updating plugins, since we can already you know, update single plugins, um, update themes, uh, delete both. Um, we decided to not do bulk actions on the theme side because we figured out that it doesn't matter if you select every theme and then an action, or rather perform the action when you click on the theme. So we went with that and just queued um, regular updates instead of doing a, a bulk update, for example. And also, uh, activation and deactivation is something that we decided not to do in a, in a way that doesn't require a page refresh. Uh, the reason for that is, is that, especially plugins, um, um, have the tendency <laughs> Uh, to uh, redirect you to a settings page, for example, on the next page load, right? And so what would happen would be you would activate a plugin, um, and since there is no page load, you know, you just go to, I don't know, you want to, you know, write a new post, so you go to the next, to the, to the post section, um, but hey, you're being redirected to uh, the settings page and kind of, you know, held hostage by the plugin, which is a really bad, really bad experience. So we decided not to do that. Um, also, uh, there's currently not a way to make sure that if you activate a plugin uh, that way that it doesn't fatal your site. So you might end up in a situation where you activate the plugin and you can't access your site anymore, which is also not something that you know, we really enjoy. So um, we decided not to do that, but rather do all the rest of that. Um, another challenge that came with that was that you can manage plugins from six different places in WPF. You can manage them from the, you know, the, the plugin list of installed plugins. You can manage them from the plug, plugin install screen. Uh, you can do both for multi-site, so you have two more, which is four. Um, and then you can manage them from the details iframe. So 
So when there's a um, when the plugin is ho hosted at the .org repository, you have a link that says more details, and it you know brings up a modal with um, its page on the in the repository, and you can from there you can also install or update your plugin, uh, and that is also du duplicated for uh, single and multi-site installations. Uh, and the same goes for themes, where you have the themes page, the theme install page, and the um, the modals of the preview of uh, a not yet installed uh, theme. So there's a, a bunch of um, places where you can manage plugins and themes, um, probably places that most people have not even discovered or thought of. Um, and all of those had to, be, had to be covered by Shiny Updates. And we had to make sure that the JavaScript who handles all that um, is versatile enough to uh, be able to handle that from all these different um, areas. But, um, I think it went pretty well. I have um, a couple of quotes, a couple of um, um, testimonials, if you want. Uh, Jeff Chandler, he said he loves it, and he can understand how they are so fast, the new way of updating it. He wonders if it was magic. He thinks it's amazeballs. <laughs> we have... Um, Shrenibus, I think that's how you pronounce that name, of course. Um, uh, he commented on a WP Tavern uh, post about uh, Shiny Updates. Um, and he, was, he, was, uh, he liked how professionally it looked. Uh, so I'm very glad about that. Um, and I want to show you how professional, professionally it, is, it actually does look. OK. <laughs> so this is how it looks. We have uh, a brand new color scheme for uh, your update notifications right here. Um, you all know how that works now. It's pretty much the same. It works this, the same way as it does in 4.2 or you know, in your works installations already. This is how it, how it works. If you want to delete a plugin, let's delete theme check um, and ask you if you're sure. And basically, it works like deleting a, a, a comment, right? It just disappears. This is where you cheer, by the way. No worries, no worries, no expectations. Um, let's add a new plugin. I just deleted, oh, I hope my internet doesn't, there you go, perfect. Um, Reactions is an amazing plugin by my dear friend, uh, Gary Pendergast. Uh, installing it looks like this. And it's done. Thank you. <laughs> All right, this is going really well. Uh, themes. Uh, themes. This is how themes look. Let's see. We have a new version available. Uh, right now, if you want to update a theme, you would you know, open the modal and you have the update link now, update now link, and it would create a, a page refresh. Um, going forward, you will have the opportunity to do it through this link, as you know, or as, you, as you've known. Um, but you can also now update it directly from the uh, theme index, um, just like that. And uh, I don't know how long it'll take. It has to download the, okay, not too long. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. This is great. Um, deleting a theme is really fast as well. Gone, right? Gone, don't need that theme. Uh, adding a new one, and this is gonna be last, uh, example. Let's see. I have no idea. This is, looks really pretty. <laughs> Let's do that. Install it. Um, this might take a little bit, bit longer. Uh, you can also install a theme from the preview, as I said, just like this. Uh, and once you have it installed, boom, installed, uh, it all also shows up as being installed right there without any page refreshes. So it's a lot faster, it's, it's prettier. You don't see the bleak screen of sadness. Um, and I'm, I'm really proud of the, the results so far. Um, there's also something that we've been working on in terms of the updates page right here. It's, um, we're thinking about adding a, a setting, I don't know if that is even available, yes. A setting to um, enable automate, automatic uh, updates for plugins and themes, uh, and also for uh, major versions of WordPress. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about updating things any longer. It would just, you know, happen aut automatically, <laughs> pretty much. Great. 
So WordPress 4.6, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Uh, um, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to, to get that uh, into 4.6. Um, as you can see, or as you just saw, it's, it's um, pretty far in terms of implementation. Um, we will do a couple more user tests uh, just to make sure that we got things right. Um, but overall, it, it's pretty much ready to go. Um, so 4.6, um, no, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be released in August this year. If you do want to get involved with um, Shiny updates, uh, ble please do. Uh, we all have um, chats every week, every Thursday, uh, every Tuesday, I'm sorry, every Tuesday, starting the week after next. Uh, please go to uh, github.com slash openland slash shiny updates to see the source, uh, to uh, open pull requests, <coughs> to open issues if you find any bugs. Um, that would be greatly appreciated if you don't feel comfortable with that. Um, please uh, Download the plugin. You can either go to uh, wordpress.org slash plugin slash shiny updates, or you can search for shiny updates from the plugin install screen in your WordPress admin. Um, and yeah, activate it, uh, test it, use it, see how you like it, if the colors are pleasing, um, if the actions are uh, not as jarring as they were, um, things like that. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, any help uh, would be great. My name is Konstantin Ovenland. I'm uh, available on Twitter uh, or GitHub or pretty much anywhere under at Ovenland. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter if you want. Um, I have a blog at konstantin.ovenland.it with pretty pictures. Um, I work at Automatic uh, uh, at a, yeah, on a team that is um, dedicated to uh, contributing to WordPress and the WordPress.org infrastructure. Uh, currently, besides uh, working on Shiny updates, I'm also working on uh, a new uh, plugin directory, um, which is um, scheduled to be uh, released within the year. Um, so you can look forward to that as well. Um, I'm from Germany originally. I now live in Southern California, where it's actually usually pretty nice. Uh, I really like the weather. I don't surf. Um, and if you have any questions about any of these topics, um, now is the time. Oh, yeah. Who's first question? That, that's exciting. Uh, it's going to make, make life so much easier. Um, one thing that in the back of my mind is that, yes, autom automatic updates for WordPress core is brilliant, but is there going to be an emphasis on getting people to update plugins on a more frequent uh, basis to make them compatible and also secure with the changes in WordPress core? Right. Do, do you mean uh, in, in terms of the screen that I just showed you or, or in general? You know, one, one of the challenges I think we face is that when Word, WordPress updates very, very regularly, and that's brilliant, right. but the plugins don't update so regularly. Yeah. So the, the concern is, as, as WordPress moves on, are the plugins going to leave holes behind because they're not updated okay. as regular? So is there, an is there going to be an emphasis on encouraging plugin developers to stay, keep up effectively? Right. Um, so there, there already is. Like we, um, the, plugin, the plugin team does a lot of, to, um, first of all, uh, educate uh, plugin developers about new changes that are coming up in, in a new release. Um, so we write field notes on uh, make.wordpress.org slash core. Um, we send out emails to every plugin author, um, I think twice per release. I think once is um, just after RC and one is before we release, if I'm not mistaken, at least once, right? Yeah. Uh, where we let them know that uh, there is a new release. Uh, we link them to those field notes. Uh, we encourage them to update the um, tested up to version, right? Um, so uh, we do all that. Um, if there happens to be a plugin that uh, has a known vulnerability, uh, we have, or the, the core team has in the past already uh, shipped out automatic updates for those plugins. Um, Jetpack, for example, has received one of those updates where it's a forced update, more or less, um, to make sure that we close that security hole. So um, WordPress is able to do that, to do that and, we, and they do do that um, if necessary. Um, the, the fancy, shiny updating, is that Backbone? No. What is it? It's, <laughs> it's just a, a JavaScript object that it's uses... vanilla. There's no jQuery. It, it, no. It, was, it uses jQuery, but it's not, not, not in Backbone. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, that was it. 
I have two questions, if that's not too selfish. Uh, they're quite unrelated. We've got plenty of time. The first one is, are you doing any work on the upload of um, themes and or plugins? Because that choose file button's looking a bit dated now. And there are quite often times where I want to upload multiple plugins in one oh, go. Oh, you mean, you mean in the admin? Yeah. This would be a great opportunity for version three. <laughs> so um, yes, uh, it's, it's something that uh, has been brought up before, um, but it's not part of, of that iteration on, on updates. Uh, but I agree, it is overdue. Um, it, is, it, is, it is ugly. Um, just having a dra drag and drop uh, uploader would be, you know, would, would help so much in, in making it less of a pain. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, that is something that uh, could be done fairly easily if someone um, put some time and effort in it. Yeah. Which leads nicely to my second question, which is, do you have any idea why this particular featured project, as it is now, uh, has received so little contribution? Is there something about it that you think puts <laughs> people off contributing to it? I, I wish I knew. If I, if I knew, I might be able to, uh, to mitigate that. Um, I don't know. I, honest, I honestly don't know. I don't know what it is. It's, it's um, maybe, maybe we've not communicated enough that we're looking for more contrib contributions and more contributors. Um, maybe people didn't know that it was like the, the, the effort was going on in the first place. Um, it was something that I also, that I also experienced with a uh, custom logo, which I worked on for 4.5. Um, and now with the plugin directory as well. I mean, plugin, the plugin directory, like there are so many people who have a stake in, in the plugin directory and an interest in you know, having it be as, as great as, as humanly possible. Um, and yet, uh, when we do plugin directory chats, you know, like there's two people who show up um, and like voice their opinion, which is me. <laughs> And someone else. <laughs> so it's it's um, you know it's I, I I wish I knew what I could do to um, to get more people involved. I mean, especially with a plugin directory, uh, it's something that um, yeah, so many people use on a daily ba daily basis. Um, and where now is really the time uh, to to make it shine and make it you know behave the way that plugin authors and users uh, want it to behave. Um, so if you're interested in helping out with the plugin directory please do let me know. Uh, great opportunity to um, have a big impact on uh, the WordPress uh, plugin uh, ecosystem and WordPress history, I want to say. Well, first of all, thank you for uh, a great demo. And <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, seriously. I didn't even practice. <laughs> yes. OK. Uh, the question is simple. If you update the plugin the regular way, uh, it enables the maintenance mode. So does it happen when you update the plugin or theme with Shiny updates? Uh, yes, it does. So um, uh, yes, it does. It, the, the, the way it works is that we um, send an AJAX request currently. Uh, this might be, become a REST API endpoint where we do that. Uh, so we send a, a request um, to, uh, to WordPress. And WordPress checks if the request is valid and then goes ahead and um, uses the regular uh, updater, um, the WordPress updater, that you would also use when you um, reload or refresh the page. Um, and that is the, uh, the, the, the mechanism that enables uh, the maintenance mode. So it's not something that you, you would have to enable uh, manually every time that you do something with it. It's just something that gets enabled automatically when you update a plugin uh, or theme and use the proper API for it. And maybe just a follow-up question with the maintenance mode. Um, when you install two plugins in parallel with the Shiny update, does that work good without like um, so, deactivating yes. the maintenance mode before the other one is installed? Um, no. So th these are um, so right right now it's um, two separate requests. So it would get um, activate like the maintenance mode would be enabled, disabled, enabled, and disabled. Uh, no. It's just a queue of, um, of uh, plugins or themes that, that wait to be updated. And we send that, that request after the old one came back. Uh, does, does this work in the background? I'm sure that I remember back in the day navigating away from 
a page whilst it was updating and then my site went belly up. <laughs> uh, so I've learned not to do that and I probably wouldn't ever do it again even if this does work in the background, but there you go. Um, that's my question. Uh, yes or no. So we kind of prevent you from doing that, right? So right now if you enable, uh, if you, if you uh, click update and you then want to leave the page, uh, you would get an alert box saying, if you leave now, like, you, know, you, you may lose you know, information or whatever. Um, and kind of gives you a warning to, to not do that, right? So you, you kind of be, you're kind of prevented from doing that. Um, this is something that we added just to make sure, right? Um, if you would have just one plugin that you would update or one theme, like one item that you would update, theoretically, you could probably um, navigate away uh, without any harm being done because it's just another request uh, that will complete um, and it doesn't matter what the return value is really, right? It's just, it's just like making the UI, the user interface look pretty and give you um, a notification of how, how it went, you know, if it was successful or not. Um, the thing is though, as soon as you have more than one item that you want to update, um, since we have a queue, um, you would have to wait for the last item to start being processed before you could move away, otherwise it wouldn't be processed. Yeah, uh, mine is about uh, uploading files uh, into the media section of uh, WordPress. Mm -hmm. uh, when uploading uh, so many files, of course, they become cluttered, like within uh, the media where you upload them. Mm -hmm. Could there be a way, like in the future, where you can upload them into folders, for example, within that section, so that you can easily manage them? There are plugins that, that help you do that. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a, a core ticket that would, that would um, help you organize uh, media items. Um, I'm not aware of, of where that is at. But I'm 100% I'm certain that there's a plugin that would allow you to, to add that functionality. This is, yeah, currently not something that isn't core. Um, just a question about the plugin directory. Is yes. there anything from a design point of view plan to really make the plugins that haven't been updated for a while stand out a lot more and possibly even demote their priority in the directory search results if they, if they haven't been updated for a long time? I mean, I still see a lot of, you know, hasn't been updated for two years. Is it time to review that and maybe even reduce that to a year, given the, how fast everything's moving with WordPress? Just wonder whether there's any discussion over there has been emphasizing discussion. that. There has been discussion, and now is a great time to, to, uh, to change that if, if we wanted to change that. Um, one of the things that we, we uh, were thinking about was um, to not um, that go away from like a, a hard two-year cut and uh, move towards um, uh, the last version number that they um, reported to be compatible to, saying, okay, so if you've not if you're not compatible with like the last five versions, you're outdated, right? Um, in terms of making them less um, uh, accessible uh, or, or you know. Uh, findable, uh, I want to say, uh, it, that is currently already the case. So if you if you use search, um, uh, outdated plugins don't don't show up in, in search anymore unless you happen to um, uh, write their slug exactly, right? Um, so that's the only the only time where it would show up. Um, I'm we're, we're currently we're currently uh, in the very beginning of thinking about the the, the new uh, user interface or the new layout for the plugin directory. Um, so I can't say what that notice will look like um, if we just you know color the background red <laughs> across the page or something. I don't know. Um, but it's it's definitely something that you know you could get involved if you have an opinion there. Um, we have on make wordpress.org slash meta. There's a post about um, wireframes and just a general idea of how the, the plugin directory could look like. Um, so if you want to want to follow along there, uh, um, because yeah, that's where you know we're going to be discussing design and and you know as it gets into more detail. Um, yeah, and you could uh, talk about that there as well. Um, can you explain what is a React plugin and why it is a featured plugin? <laughs> Uh, yes, so uh, the reaction or react plugin uh, by Gary Pendergast adds uh, the possibility for you to add reactions uh, to a paragraph of text, right? Or um, to a post. 
And why is it a feature plugin? Because uh, Gary thought it might be hilarious to um, propose it as a feature plugin and see what people think. <laughs> And uh, of course, there was outrage, like with pretty much any other plugin that he suggests. Um, it probably won't end up in core in the way that it is currently written, um, but it's a it's a nice a nice way to explore, you know, how you could integrate custom uh, common types in WordPress. Thank you so much, you guys. Okay, thank you, everybody.